In this module, module three, we're going to talk about creating the report application. By the time you've completed this module, you're going to be able to create a report application. Now that report application is going to end up resulting in that XML data stream that we're sending across to the Genero report engine. So we'll be have to create a report application. Part of creating that report application is also creating an RDD file. The RDD file is created when that report application is compiled. In addition, we'll look at changing the output options. Are we going to send the report to the report viewer, to PDF? Are we going to send it to an image file? Are we going to send it directly to the printer? We'll also look at the difference between having it in preview mode or whether you should save the report on disk. We'll also look at changing the input options. Most of the times you're going to be wanting to read in the data from the database. However, you may want to read it in from a file. You may want to read it in from an XML file. We'll take a look at setting up those options as well. To start it off, we're going to look at a simple 4GL report application. This report application is going to have to include a report driver. The report driver specifies the data that's going to be included in the report. It needs to include a report program block. The report program block is going to specify the control blocks of the report, and it's actually going to be responsible for sending the data to the Genera report engine. We're going to start off our application with a type definition, setting up a record or values just so that we can reference that record. And we'll talk a little bit about the mandatory reporting API functions that you need to include in the simplest of the 4GL report applications. The first part of this simple report application I want to walk you through is the main module. Now in this main module, the steps that we see up here is we start with main. Next thing we do is we define a variable called handler, and that's a SACS document handler. Now, if you look in the BDL documentation, you will find out that the SACS document handler is, is a class that we have that helps write out XML. So I set up my variable. I have my handler. This is going to be the report handler. I specify the database. In our example here, we're going to read our data in from a database. The next part says, if I can find a report name.4RP, I'm going to take the information about it and I'm going to load it into the current settings. So this FGL report load current settings is a reporting API function that we give you as part of our general report writer library. Next, we say, then let my, so if this is true and it's, and I'm able to load the current settings, then I'm going to commit those current settings by using another reporting API, the FGL report commit current settings. Otherwise, I'm going to exit the program. Further down now, if the handler is not null, my handler was set up here. If my handler is not null, then I want to call a function that we're going to create, and that function is the report driver. When the report driver is done, our report will have been produced, so we can go ahead and exit out of the application. So before we go and look at the report driver, one of the first things you'll probably want to do is create a type definition. And by creating a type definition, you're allowing the record definition to be defined only once in the program, and then you use that name of this type whenever that record definition is required. So here's an example of a type definition for my CUS demo database. So I have my schema, CUS demo, and then underneath, you'll notice that I'm just including all the tables, I'm including all the fields, in this type record definition. And the nice thing about this is now I can have my stored or underscore data. I have it defined as a type. And whatever fields I need to pull out of that to produce my report, I know they're going to be available because I've included all the fields in this definition. So now let's take a look at our report driver. I'm creating the function here, run store order to handler. If you recall back into my main module, that was what I called when I was ready to gather the data and have it sent to the report handler. Um, right here we have a simple uh, define and declare cursor and a select showing that we're extracting data from a database. This should be familiar to you from any time you've extracted data for a report. Let's go ahead and look at the next slide. And now I start my report and I specify the name of the report block, but this time I'm saying to the XML handler and then I pass in that handler, that um, dot sax document handler variable that I created. Then for each row that's going in, I want to output it to the report. And then for each row I'm reading in, I want to output it to a report. I want to then finish the report, and I want to close the cursor. So what does my report block do? And here you'll notice the report block, if you're used to running reports in 4GL, it's much, much simpler. And that's because my formatting and my layouting is all being taken care of by my report design document. So here we define, again, using that type, my data is store order underscore data. 
I have to have an order external by, I need to stream the data across in a specific order as I expect it to come across when I'm thinking about my report design. If you want things organized by store number, if you want things organized by order number, it's important that you define it here in the report block using an order external by clause. And then the last thing is on every row, I want to print out my data. So on every row, I print out the information that I need to send across to my report. So we looked at a main module, we looked at creating the type definition, we looked at creating a report driver, and we looked at creating a report block. When it comes time to compile these, you're going to need to add a library in, and this library is my libgre.42x. And this is the library that's containing those reporting API functions that we saw earlier, the FGL report load current settings and the FGL report commit current settings. Let's go ahead and take a look at this inside of Genero Studio. Okay, to start this demonstration, I've gone ahead and I've created a uh, project workspace for us, uh, the GWR presentation project workspace. And inside I've created, have a project, and in that project I have an application node, and I have a databases node. I have already added the database node, I've already connected to a cust demo database so I can see which tables are, are involved. Now under the application node, the first thing we need to do is create our uh, application report, or reporting application, and we're going to place it inside of this SRC virtual folder. To do this, I'm going to go to File New, I'm going to select Reports, and I'm going to select Report Data, and this is going to open up my Report Data Wizard. If I had had more than one database defined, I would select the database. Here I know I only have one defined. And now it's asking me to build that, that record definition and to build the report driver and to build the report block. So the first question it asks me is, what tables do you want to include? One of the things we say when building a report application is include as much data as you can. Then you can use this report across a wide variety of report definitions. The first question we're asked is, which tables do we want to include in our report? The advice we give you is include as much data as you can, and then you can use this report application across a variety of report definitions. So I'm going to go ahead and so I'm going to go ahead and click on the double arrows and include all of my tables. In the next step, we have to define how these tables are joined together. Just because of how this database is set up, there's a few of these I'm going to have to get rid of and I'm going to have to rework. However, you'll notice that it came and it tried to do some of it for me. I'm just going to go ahead and do it from the start because I know better how that works. So I'm going to start by going, I know that my num is going to do an inner join or a normal join with my order.storeNum. I know my order.order number is going to join with my item.order number. I know that my item.stock number is going to join with my stock.stock .stock number. I know that my stock.factory code is going to define with my factory.factory code. And finally, I know that my customer.state is going to join with my state.state .state code. Um, that's all the joins I need to define the relationship between these tables. So I can go ahead and delete these last two lines. I've now defined, basically, if you think about it, the where clause across all the tables that I'm including this report definition. Why was I able to do this so quickly? Because I know my tables. I know my database. Once I get my join conditions defined, I can click next to go to the next step of the wizard. Now it's saying, okay, what columns do you want included in the result set? Again, include as many columns as you can, then you can use this report application across a wide variety of reports. So I'm going to click my double arrow and select all of the columns. And lastly, when this data is sent across, how do you want it ordered? Now this is important. Once the order is established and the report application is streaming that data across, the order can't be changed. So if you know you're going to be grouping things on store number, if you're going to be grouping things on order number, those are the type of things you want to include in this order by. So I'm going to say or store number first, and then I'm going to group it by order number. And for me, that's going to be enough for right now. So let me go ahead and click on Finish. And what you can see is it's created for you most of the code you need to have a report application. So here's my type definition. Here's my report driver. 
And then here's my report block. You'll notice it didn't give me a main module. I'm gonna to have to create that myself, but first let me go ahead and save this. Let me do a save as. I'm going to give it a name and I'll just call this, uh, but it's my report driver. And I'm gonna place that inside of that sources virtual folder. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I need to add another file. It's gonna be a source file. And this is going to be my report main. Now to fill this report main, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to go to the slide that I showed you earlier. I'm going to copy this information. And I'm going to paste it inside of this empty report. Now for the most part, this should, this should do. I'm, the only thing I will have to change is my report driver to match the report driver that I have inside of my other 4GL file. So my report driver here is run report two to handler, copy that name, go to my main module, paste that in. Now when we get around to actually running and executing reports, we'll put in the report definition document name here. We're not at that stage yet. I'm using the same custom demo database so I can leave that there. Now let me go ahead and save this. So we have a report main and we have a report driver. We're not done yet, however. There's two more things we want to do before this finishes. The first is on my application node. If you remember on the application node, because I'm using my FGL report load current settings and my FGL report commit current settings, I need to add my library. So I can go and add my libgre.42x. I have my library added. The second thing I need to do is I'm going to be creating what's known as an RDD file. We will have a slide about this coming up, but realize I can go into my report driver, and in my compiler options, I can add a dash dash build dash RDD. What this is saying is that every time the report driver module is compiled, it's going to create the RDD file that I need for as input into my report designer. Let me save these changes. Let me go ahead and build this application. And at this point, the application's been built. If I went and looked inside of my workspace, I can see that it's created a report driver.rdd file. So here's an example of how you can quickly build a simple report application using the report data wizard to create most of your code with you in this report driver module then adding your own report main where a few simple changes to map the generated code allows you to have a report ready to execute.